Hello and welcome to the Accessibility in Gaming podcast, the podcast about the accessibility, successes, and setbacks of all things gaming. I'm your host, Shelby Farley, also known as The Blind Gamer. In today's episode, we will be talking about Phasmophobia, which is a game where you play as paranormal investigators that go into various locations to determine what kind of ghost is haunting the place and to collect evidence and try not to get killed. You can play with one to four players, including yourself, and it is a cooperative game rather than playing against each other. This is one of my favorite games. It used to be my favorite game, but isn't quite my favorite anymore. But it's still definitely up there and probably my top three favorites. Some of the things this game does well is in the lobby menu, the font for the options is very large. It makes it super easy to read when I'm trying to see if I want to play single player, multiplayer, to adjust the settings. All of those options are very large, which is really nice for myself and other visually impaired people. However, there are several issues with Phasmophobia that make the game very hard to play, especially if I'm playing by myself. One issue that I have with accessibility in Phasmophobia is the font size of the journal. Since a recent update, they made the journal much more complex and detailed. So this makes it easier for players to mark down what is and isn't evidence and to cross out ghost types and whatnot, rather than just putting down the three evidence that you collect and then the type of ghost it is. So I'm sure it makes it easier for sighted players, but as someone that's visually impaired, I find the new journal style too cluttered and therefore the font is really small and I can't read the journal anymore. It used to be super easy to read the evidence page at least, but now I can't read any of it. So even before the update, there were issues with the journal because the information about each ghost type was already very small and still is very small. But now even the evidence and ghost type selection is too small, so I can't read any of that unless I use my phone as a magnifier and zoom in on it that way. Small font is the case in several places, including the list of items that you need and that you add in the lobby area before starting a job. I can't see what items I've added, what items I have, what items I need. I can't see any of that. So I have a hard time contributing to the equipment because I can't tell what is needed and what I have. Another issue with the text is the font style. Some of the font styles, especially in the journal, are very fancy, which I'm sure looks really good, but it makes it difficult to read because it's so overdone and it's not simple enough for me to just be able to tell what it says. One way to resolve the text size and font style issue would be to make the font simpler and larger in all of the menus and options that are in the game. That way it's easier to read without having to use external sources for magnification. Another option, and personally my favorite option, would be text-to-speech. If you haven't listened to my other episodes and you don't know what text-to-speech is, basically text-to-speech is when there is anything written on screen, it is read out loud to the player. This is great for people that are visually impaired because we don't have to get super close to the screen and attempt to read what's on it, which is nice because, at least for myself, I have to get so close to the screen that my nose is touching the screen, which creates nose prints on my screen, and I'm personally not a fan of that. Plus, it's a lot of strain on my eyes, which makes them hurt and also gives me headaches, which makes me stop playing sooner, whereas if the font was easier to read and the other accessibility issues were resolved, then I would be able to keep playing longer. So, text-to-speech in the journal especially 
reading information about the ghost types, and even reading the options for evidence and ghost type out loud would be great. I have never been able to read the information about each ghost, so I can't tell what evidence is possible with which ghost type, so I end up doing a lot more extra work than if I was able to look at the journal and be able to tell which evidence I need to collect based on what I've collected so far. Going along with the font size, the temperature on the thermometer is too small. I can't tell what the temperature is in a location, so I end up never picking up the thermometer to check the temperature because I can't read what it says. So again, making that larger would be great, or having audio readouts of the temperature every so often. It doesn't have to be constantly, but every so often would be nice because then I could actually use that piece of equipment whereas now I can't use it at all. The next accessibility issue with phasmophobia is that I can't tell which piece of equipment is which whenever I'm looking at the shelves in the van to see what I want to take. Certain items, like the different types of flashlights and the different cameras and things like that, look very similar. And so I end up picking up each piece of equipment and trying to test it out in hopes that I'm able to tell what it is, which takes a long time, in turn dragging out the gameplay, which is not ideal, especially if I'm playing with other players. A solution for this would be to have large print names pop up on screen whenever I hover over a piece of equipment or when I switch to it in my hand, or again text-to-speech, where if I hover over the equipment or switch items in my hand, the name of the equipment would be read out loud. Another issue with Phasmophobia's accessibility is that the orbs and the dots are incredibly hard to see. They are so quick and so small and have such poor contrast, which for myself and probably other visually impaired players makes it difficult to collect that piece of evidence because we can't see that it's even there. A possible solution for this would be to have a sound play whenever orbs come across the screen or dots appear. That way visually impaired people can hear that they are there and be able to collect that evidence rather than relying on their vision. Another option would be to make the orbs larger so that they stand out more and are more visible. And then going along with that, the last option that I've come up with is to increase the contrast, especially with the orbs, which are a light color. Whenever they're on a lighter background, I can't see that they're there because they blend in with the background. So making them larger and also increasing the contrast would be a lot easier if audio cues were not an option. Those are the issues that I found with the accessibility of Phasmophobia. If you can come up with any others, either for visually impaired people or anyone with other disabilities, please let me know. Just to recap, the issues that I've found with the game are the font size being too small in the journal and on the thermometer and in certain areas in the lobby such as the items list and then the font style being too complex and hard to read especially in the journal not being able to tell which piece of equipment is which and the inability to see orbs and dots if you have a game you would like me to cover in a future episode Or if you're a game developer and you would like me to test your current or future game for how accessible it is, please contact me at accessibilityandgaming at gmail.com or contact me on social media. You can find me at Shelby Farley, C-H-E-L-B-Y-F-A-R-L-E-Y, or The Blind Gamer, T-H-E-B-L-I-N-D-G-A-Y-M-E-R. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. In the next episode, I will be covering Dead by Daylight. 
So subscribe to the podcast so you know as soon as the next episode goes live. Until next time, thank you so much for listening to the Accessibility and Gaming Podcast. (laughs) Thank you.